Welcome to the Unbounded podcast series, where we help you attain new levels of performance and well-being by learning about the human mind. In this podcast, we're going to be exploring the topic of avoiding burnout. And the challenge we see is that we we live in a complex and ever-changing world right now. There's so much change going on with globalization, with technology, with the climate, with political uncertainty, economic uncertainty, and so on. And people feel very busy, busy in their life and busy in their heads. And there's many people that are living without balance. They're living in an extreme way that that is not helping them at all which is leading to stress, it's leading to overwhelm, it's leading to mental health issues. It's also leading to employee disengagement. And it's like there's a traffic jam in your head going on. I was recently in Bangkok on the King's birthday and all the roads were shut down. Everything was jammed up. There was nowhere for anybody to go, and and if they were going anywhere, it was going extremely slowly, and it was extremely frustrating for all those concerned. And that's sometimes how people's heads feel. You might relate to this, is like it feels like there's a traffic jam in your head, like a jungle of thought going on that's constraining and restricting and causing stress and potential burnout. And so we're going to explore this topic in this podcast, and we're going to explore it really looking at it from a psychological perspective, really exploring and looking at what the mind is doing to create that. So one of the questions to ask is, well, what's the real cause of burnout? And in my experience, nine out of 10 people you ask will probably usually point to burnout being caused by things that are going on in their life by their job or just how busy they are or the circumstances around their lives and point to those things outside of themselves as being the causal factors of of why they you know why they're in burnout when we start to explore the nature of the mind and and how that works what we can start to see is that the real cause of burnout the reason why we get to that stage is because we don't listen to or we misread the big warning signals that our minds and our bodies are giving us. So you, if you've listened to any of our other podcasts, you may, you may have heard us talk about the way that we can use our feelings as, as a barometer. Often what happens is that our, our feeling system will give us lots of signals. It's like the warning light on the dashboard of your car. When you're running the system too much, when you're overloading it, that warning light goes off. And and how that shows up for us psychologically as human beings is we start to feel caught up. We start to feel heavy. We start to feel stressed. We start to feel anxious. Now, often what we'll mistakenly do is is read those signals and, and think that they're giving us feedback on our circumstances or our situation. And then we kind of try to look to those circumstances or situations and try and make changes there in order so that we feel better. So we think we've got to change our job or we think we've got to change our house or we think we've got to change something on the outside. Now, there may be some changes that need to happen on the outside. So it may be a good idea to change job or it, it may be a good idea to, to make some adjustments. However, when we look at how the mind works and we really explore that, what we start to see is that the information that our feelings are giving us is where our thought is in that moment. Because thought and feeling are two sides of one coin. So whatever thinking we're in, whatever thinking is creating our reality, there, there's a feeling that comes with that. When we can kind of tune into that barometer and and, and see that we might be caught up in some thinking about our circumstances or situations, about our job, about, you know, the current state of the economy and and be concerned about that, 
Instead of focusing there, we can turn our attention back into uh, the mind and perhaps not get so caught up in the reality that's kind of showing up for us. And what results in doing that is that it opens the mind up to have fresh insight and fresh thinking and new perspectives. And from that space of fresh thinking and insight and perspective, there might be some things that some changes that we might want to make um, in terms of our situation or our circumstance. But we're doing it from a space of openness and from really not a space from reactivity. So I'd like to just step back and talk a little bit about thought and, and what it does and what it is. So if we look at this from a neuroscientific perspective, uh, thought is just neurological energy passing down neural pathways. It's just a, a tiny uh, impulse of energy. That's all it is. And what it very cleverly does, the mind very cleverly does, is it groups all of these impulses, these millions of neurological signals together to create our experience that we live within. So it's just energy, but it's so clever it gets together, it groups together with millions of bits of energy to create the experience that we're having in any moment. So we then live in that thought and the thought creates our experience and it feels totally real. It feels it's our reality, but it's actually not real. It's just what thought is creating for us. So if we think about this, two people can be looking at exactly the same thing and have totally different realities about it. And you can think something's amazing uh, a brilliant movie, and I can walk out of the same movie and have a totally different thinking and totally different experience about it. You can think the economy right now is exciting and it's, a, it's an opportunity, and I can think it's terrible and frightening. And whatever it is that thought's doing for, for you or I, it's the reality and the experience that we live within. Now, why is that so important? It's because uh, what we're trying to do in these podcasts is start to help you observe the role that thought is playing and be somewhat dissociated from what it's creating. Because no doubt in your life, there's all sorts of realities that your thought is creating that are working for you. You might have a reality about yourself that you're good at your job or you're good as a leader or you're good at this and so on. And some of those realities will be helping you. But where burnout comes from is when the mind is creating realities that you're living within that cause you to clog up the psychological system with stress and with fear and with overwhelm and with frustration and with upset. And the more that we can step back and observe that thought, not as the truth, just as thought, just as a perspective that we have, the more we're able to be detached from what is creating or potentially creating burnout. So another key element of that, I think, Martin, is, is the variability that we can experience as well. So, so not only do different people have different experiences of what may look like the same thing, but actually our own experience really varies. You know, it's why on one day we can walk into the office and feel, you know, we look at our, um, our inbox and feel completely and utterly overwhelmed by it and, you know, not just not be able to feel like we can get through as, you know, whatever we've got to get done in the day. And yet on another day, there's the same number of emails in the inbox. There's the same amount of stuff to do. And yet, our perspective on it and how we see it, our reality is completely different and it feels differently to us. So really that variability in our own experience points to the role of the mind and the impact that that has on creating uh, the reality that we're experiencing. So it's nothing to do with the emails? No. It just looks like that to us in this immersive world that we live in. It's simply to do with our relationship to thought and the experience we're having in the moment. So the opportunity for psychological freedom comes from shifting our relationship to our thought, not from finding a way to get rid of the emails. Because we're never, in terms of how the mind works, we are never directly experiencing our circumstances or 
a situation or another person. It's always through the thought-created reality that we are living in. And this means that we can actually live in the times that we live in today with everything going on in the outside world. We can live in this world with incredible psychological freedom and effectiveness, regardless of how much is going on. It reminds me of a of a Star Wars movie that I love called Rogue One. And some of you listeners may have, may, may have watched this, but in a particular scene, there's a guy that's blind and he's in the heat of the battle. There's all sorts of things going on around him. He's being shot at by, by 20, 30 different people in different places. And so in a way, this is a sort of metaphor for what's going on in the world outside. It feels like I'm being shot at. It feels like there's loads going on and I need to duck and I need to run. And, but, but actually what this Chinese guy does is he goes inside. He's calm. He's not impacted by the outside world. He, he has a different relationship to the power inside him that enables him to operate with peace and power and and what it does is it enables him to access and be incredibly productive in that moment. He's able to pick things up. He's able to dodge. He's able to move. He's able to shoot in a way that he wouldn't be able to if he was caught up in the outside world. And we're suggesting to you, the listener, that this is available to you regardless of what you've got going on. This power and this, this effectiveness is available to all of us when we're not caught up in these thoughts and this traffic jam going on. So you might be listening to um, what we've been talking about so far and thinking, okay, well, if, you know, if the outside world if, world, if circumstances and situations don't cause my experience, if I can have psychological freedom from that, then it must be something within me. And therefore, if I can't control the outside, then actually what, I'm, what I need to do is control and manage my own thoughts and feelings. And that's what's going to potentially, you know, give me that freedom. There are lots of ways of trying to do that. But I guess in, in the work that we do with our clients, what we've seen is that there's a gr much greater, deeper transformation that can happen for people um, when they truly start to inquire and explore the nature of the mind and the role of the mind and how it creates our reality and our experience. You know, there's lots of techniques out there like NLP or or cognitive behavioral therapy or mindfulness. Um, and a number of these techniques, are, and many of them work well for people, but they're working at the level of, I need to change my thought. I need to control it or manage it or, or do something with it. And what we're pointing at is, is not, not that. We're sort of working one level below that, really, to say, let's just understand how it's working. And by understanding how it's working and the nature of thought, um, uh, actually, many of the problems, almost all of the problems that we're creating in our lives um, can dissipate and not have the impact to cause the burnout in the first place. Another key element to talk about here is the nature of how our thought and our experience changes. So I uh, found myself caught up in my thinking um, last week. It was, it was late in the evening. I'd had a very busy day and I felt immersed in, and, and overwhelmed. I felt stress. I um, was caught up in a whole lot of things that my thinking had been doing. What, what tends to happen at that point is we can analyze we can try and want to work things out we can make bad decisions we can go oh my god yeah i'm going to give this job up i've had enough of it we can have all sorts of negative un and unhelpful thinking and uh, one of the things that we also point people to in terms of how the mind works is to just look at the experience and how it changes because the very next day um my thought had changed and my experience of everything that I was thinking the night before had changed dramatically. Now, when we're in the heat of the moment, having all those thoughts, we feel totally immersed in the experience we're creating. And, and that's, you know, what creates the burnout. But there's something to just trust and remember and, you know, say, you know, hang on a second, this is going to change. Let me just let it settle. 
let me have the weekend let me go on holiday let me let me let the experience and thought pass because then i i end up getting to a stage of more equilibrium and more balance where i have more measured thinking and uh, and i get more sort of wisdom intelligence coming through as opposed to what i was caught up on that evening so the key that we're suggesting to you with you know whenever you're in overwhelm is to notice what thoughts doing and to and to let it pass to let things settle and just just picking up on the um, notion of overwhelm, Martin, because I think it's something that, you know, we can probably all relate to. You know, there are times in our lives where, you know, we can really feel quite overwhelmed and and almost it's a little bit like our, you know, our noses are pushed so closely to, to, to the window that we can't see our reflection in it. And often just taking a step back and giving ourselves that time and space to um, allow thought to just move through as it's designed to do. You know, when, you know, the way thought moves is that the way it works is that we're never totally stuck in, in a reality. Thought is constantly moving and changing. And um, I think what you're saying is that by just taking that step back, we were able to see the reflection in, in the window and just sort of see a different perspective. And, and the, the distinction that I'll go to make that I'd like to make here is the one around kind of the difference between feeling overwhelmed um, but being overloaded because often burnout happens because of what's going on in our psychology but but also it it looks like we've just got loads going on you know there's there's lots going on in in our lives and in our work and everything now when when we're feeling overwhelmed often what happens is our aperture to fresh perspective and thinking is quite narrow so um it it can feel that's you know where it can just really feel quite hard to be able to kind of have some ideas about what to do or or just have a different perspective now what happens is when it, it may well be that we are overloaded right so that it may well be that there, we've got a lot going on in life and you know we're juggling 10 balls and we kind of don't quite know where they're going to be landing and and where we can kind of catch them and i guess what i'd like to point our listeners to do is just to notice the the difference in the feeling. So when we're feeling overwhelmed, often what the feeling that comes with that is is a real kind of heaviness, um, and we feel all caught up, and we feel like how we're we're really kind of pulled quite closely to that window. When we're not feeling overwhelmed, and there's more of a sense of actually. I'm overloaded. There's a lot going on. I'm juggling too many balls or there are too many balls to juggle. There, there's a lighter feeling with that. And our aperture to um, fresh thinking and new perspective is much more open. And so just being able to notice whether where your feeling is, is in all of that will allow you to access that fresh thinking and hopefully have some insight as to what you might need, some of the changes that you might need to make. So we're asking, are you overloaded? I have you got too much going on or are you overwhelmed? Which is all about your relationship to what's going on and the thinking that you've got about it. I'd just like to talk about a client example that we had a couple of years ago. This was an extremely successful partner in a venture capital firm. It was a sizable firm. Uh, He was senior and uh, he had an incredible track record of success. Um, But as you may know, those environments are really successful and um, lots of high stakes. And he um, made a mistake on on a transaction that cost the firm millions. It was very high pressure. It was very high profile. Uh, Many people involved in the situation. And uh, over an extended period of time, he felt like he lost his mojo. He lost his confidence. He started to question everything that he was capable of or not capable of. And he got to the point where he had to have some time out of the business. And and during that time out, again, uh, was questioning whether he could do it anymore, whether he was actually any good or not. Um, Because thought has this incredible capacity to question us and beat us up and challenge everything and and drain our confidence and and drain our power. 
But we worked with him again, um, same, same things, teaching him some of the things that we're pointing at here. Um, over, over a three-day period, we taught him some fundamentals about the mind. And, and what happened was he had some epiphany moments. You don't need an extended period out of the business to have epiphany moments. He saw these things about what thought was doing and, and what it had been doing to him, what stories it had been making up, having him believe about himself. He got it in an instant. And actually, very quickly, he realized he'd been making it all up himself. So he, he pretty quickly went back into the very same situation and totally uh, shifted how he saw himself and the business and was able to go back and, as he calls it, totally get his mojo back. And he's totally unrecognizable um, from the person that he had become. And this is what's available when you shift your relationship to and your understanding of what thought is doing and your relationship to what it's creating for you.